Um, you used the word anxious a couple of times to describe these performances. Is that a concern for you, given what some of these players have achieved over the last 18 months or so, or is that just the circumstances you get in, just a new coach coming in next session? I think probably I have to term it a little bit better. What I mean by it is probably forcing things a little bit. And in, obviously, I think they realise the situation they are in, in terms of a change of manager because things have not been going well and we hadn't uh, been on a good run coming out of the uh, the World Cup break and we only had that game against Bayer Leverkusen so I could feel it obviously when things go against you in the game um, we're not dealing with that very well having said that we've come back from 2-2-1s two, two to, uh, to, to win the game so uh, I know I've used the term, but to be fair to the players, I think they just need a little bit of time and a little bit of rhythm and, and that will disappear. You've also been in a couple of weeks now. Um, is there a, maybe a particular skill set that you think is maybe missing from the team just now that maybe an injured player could bring or sign in January? I think just the rhythm. You know, It's clear that we haven't had centre-backs, we haven't had a stable back four. Um, We've managed to win two very, very important games without it, which shows a different side in terms of their mentality and possibly a strength of the squad that's probably being overlooked because the performance has not been perfect, but the results have been. I think if there had been two two nils, you'd have only still got six points. So the reality is we've played two games against two of the tougher opponents and we've come out with the, with the results, which is the most important thing right now. I think looking ahead, if you're looking for a soundbite there, mate, in terms of what I'm looking for in January, what I want is everybody to be fit, and if that's not going to be until the start of Feb, I think that will be the moment that I can assess the squad, whose contracts should be renewed, who should stay, and what areas I think we need to improve in. Um, there's one or two, but I would, would prefer to keep that in-house at the moment. When it comes to defensive displays, would you just expect that they'll get better when you have the, the right players back and up to speed? Yeah, I think clarity. I think clarity gives you a peace of mind and then the peace of mind enables you to perform. And I think in the last couple of games, it's been more sloppy turnovers that have hurt us. We have let in four goals, two of those being set plays. And I thought Leighton Clarkson's goal was a particularly good one. Um, so there's a couple of areas we just need to eradicate. We've had a lot of the ball in the last two games and um, we've scored six goals. So there's a positive on that side. And James Tavernier, there were some suggestions that he's maybe not been feeling 100%, maybe travelled separately. Is that something he's been having to play through over the past week or so? Yeah, I don't want to use anything as excuses, but obviously in the last week, Tav's been off twice. He did travel on his own. He was a big, big doubt for the game and probably in his performance, you saw parts of that. Um, he seems fine now. Obviously, Connor's first game with Ben. Ben's coming back, but he's had some issues coming back. So that's why, you know, Connor's been clean in his, his rehab. That's why he was able to play. Glenn Kamara probably should have had an operation in the last couple of months, but has played through it. So there's lots of little things. Alfredo, what you won't know is he had to come in from training the day before the game as well and played probably when he shouldn't have done. But that's, I want to take all the excuses aside. They're paid really well, these boys, and they play for a really big football club and they're living their dream. So if they're fit, they go out there and play. If we, didn't, if we let everyone that had a niggle or a little bit of a sore throat or a runny nose not play, we'd struggle to put out an 11 at the moment. So that's the situation we're in. That's why I, I would never question the mentality of the group, especially in the, getting the two results, because some people have played when maybe if everyone's available, they wouldn't have. Is Glenn's issue something that may need to be addressed in the future or is that resolved now? It's manageable, but when he plays it swells up, so we've got to be careful with the type of training. We've obviously had the frozen uh, ground at the moment, so after he trains there's a reaction. In, in the games there's a reaction, we're managing Ryan Jack's minutes. John Lundstrom took an injection to be on the bench on Tuesday night. So they're all the things that uh, when you come in it's like a Pandora's box that you wasn't expecting, but so far so good. Can I ask you just to clarify, you said that you might not be able to assess the squad when everyone's back fit and that might not be until February. How does that fit in with what you're able to do in January in terms of maybe bringing in additions to the squad? Well, the thing is, there's one or two areas I think we wanted to strengthen anyway, uh, which is w w the discussions will lead around. But I think uh, what Rangers Football Club have on paper as a squad and what we are using at the moment is two different things. I think everyone's clear we've got just in the attacking positions, if you don't have Kamar Roof, Yanis Hadji and Tom Lawrence, that's going to bring a lot to the squad. If you don't have Goldson, Suta, Holanda, Davis, that's going to bring a lot to the squad as well. Borna Barasic will be back in the next few days. So again, naturally that 
that kicks you on as a group. So I think we have 10 or 11 players unavailable. Um, so therefore the competition for places is not as strong. The heat that puts on the person that's got the shirt is maybe uh, not as hot. And the, all those things that add competition to a squad, I think we've used the bench and the squad quite well. You, the four subs the other night certainly come on and made a big impact and they're chomping at the bit and we'll see some changes again tomorrow because I'm trying to create that competition that I think makes a strong team. Is, is it, sorry, I was going to say, the competition you're trying to create, you maybe just can't quite create that yet because of the injuries. So in terms of where you're, where you're at and knowing your squads, um, do you feel that you're, you're kind of behind the curve on that a little bit? Through, through no fault of your own, just for the... I th yeah, I just think that's reality. I think, I think Gio lived in that in his last few weeks and, and I certainly am living in that right now. It's not an excuse. We've got more than enough. When you see the 11 that we'll pick tomorrow. It's a strong team. It should go to Ross County and perform, should go to Ross County and have a big chance of winning the game. And that was certainly the case with Aberdeen and certainly the case with Hibbs. Are we the strongest we can be right now? I think the reality tells you with the players missing that you would like them back. And I think that adds competition. We train more than we play. We train three times a week to play once. So the training levels, I always say, if you're a, if you're a good team, your training game should prepare you more than the challenges that you face at the weekend, and that was certainly the case last time I was here. Can I ask you about Alex Lowry and where he is in a pecking order at the moment? He's close. He's close. I think uh, there's areas of his game that I think are outstanding for a young player, and there's areas of his game I'd like to see him uh, improve. I think I have to pick and choose the right moments, and when he goes in, I'm expecting him to go in and stay in and be at this club for a long term, be one of the leaders moving forward. I, this, if you're looking at one area that I have loads of experience, because everyone talks about experience, that is the area that I'm skilled in. And I think uh, Alex is not too far away. What he must do is the teammates will pick him. So when he comes to see me, when he will from time to time and say, Gaffer, when am I going to get a chance? Well, would your teammates pick you? So it's a big thing that for a young player. When they train every day, they have to earn the right off their teammates as well. And, and I think at the moment he is really heading in the right direction. He hasn't played much this season under the previous management team. And, but for me, he is the future of Rangers. So as time, when the group settles, you'll see more of Alex Lowry. But only if he, if he deserves it. And the place that he's got to deserve it is every day in training. You spoke to him about that and his understanding of, of where he is at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. Mike, in terms of uh, Alfredo, are you looking for more from him in terms of improving his, his fitness as well as his performances? Yeah, yeah, of course. I think when Alfredo is at it, he, there's not a lot of difference in the way that he looks on the eyes. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a certain uh, physical shape. Uh, he always has been that. I remind everyone when he was scoring goals that were beating Porto and... and and teams like that, he, he looked how he looks, he, you know, that, that's him. I just think Alfredo's been out of rhythm because he had a long-term injury, quite a serious one at the back end of last season that trailed into this season. Uh, he's been in and out of the team, it's fair to say, and at the moment he's probably playing when he's one of the players who are playing through the pain barrier for the team. So I'm never going to question in terms of his mentality when he's here because there's a lot of things that maybe you can question that young boy for, and he has been questioned for, but certainly not the commitment when I see him day in, day out. So in terms of his, is he in tune, is he here fully, is he training well, is he trying to play to the maximum he can play at, at the moment? I think he is. Whether he's in form or not, that's for, that's for everybody else's opinion. Is he also carrying a specific injury then? Yeah. Are you able to share that? No. no yeah. okay. But is that something you think you can just manage? I've got to manage it. I've got to manage it because if everybody came out, we wouldn't have enough to play. And at the moment, the results are important uh, for the football club. It's a busy schedule, so we've all got to just bite down the gum shield and go. But he's someone that he came in from training the day before the Aberdeen game. And if it was somebody else, he wouldn't have played. Okay. Well, Antonio Cholak, you back for tomorrow? No. Can you tell us what's up with him? It's just he's had a slight calf problem and he's not ready. We thought he would be, but he's not ready. We'll be ready for the 28th. And hopefully, if everything goes to plan, so will Kamar Roof. We've seen quite a few teams chop and change players on this busy schedule. Doesn't seem like you're going to be able to do that, Michael. How tough is that? You maybe can't rotate the team as much as you'd like. Yeah, there'll be five changes tomorrow. Will they tell us who they are? <laughs> <laughs> no. Will Connor be able to play back to back games? Yeah, I think so. I think so. 
it's important we don't take a risk. We we have Leon who was sick for a few days, and um, <clears throat> so he's back available. Obviously, James has been playing, but Ben's now ready to play, and we'll we'll, we'll assess. I think. We played the game yesterday. It was just about recovering from the trip travel. Today we've had we've done barely enough just to, to just to get them breathing and come back in, and we've got quite a long time till tomorrow night's game. We're aware that uh, it's the second away game in three days. It's there to challenge us, but we're looking forward to it. So I think uh, I think the feel good feeling of scoring so late in the game and winning the game the other night, you know, the adrenaline will get us through the next the next game. But we're we're certainly looking forward to it. Is Ben Davis fit for tomorrow? So did you did you say yeah? Yeah. And are you able to clarify Barisic? When is he back? And were you concerned this morning when you read maybe you didn't read the, the reports that he's feeling exhausted mentally and physically after the World Cup? Listen, I think you know we can look at that in two ways because obviously he only played in the one game, but he has been training non-stop for that period as well. There's a big burden when you play for your country and you're travelling. Um, the emotion inside that camp of getting to a semi-final and losing. So I think you've got to put that all in. I wanted to give them a few days afterwards because there was a couple of things back home, commitments for the whole squad that they had to go to. Uh, he had a commitment with the full national team and then he had a commitment in his hometown as well. And it's important I don't take that away from him. Um, he's an expectant father as well. His fiance is expecting. So there's a lot of things in the background. So we're going to give him a couple of days. We're back here Boxing Day and be ready to play on Mother on the 28th if selected because there's a young Scottish fullback doing quite well at the moment in our team. So let's not kick him out of the team before he deserves to lose his shirt. Last one, Roman. Yeah, I was just going to ask Michael, is, is Scott Arfield obviously came up Trump's the other night. Is he a player that you'd like to see here beyond his current deal? Well, Scotty, firstly, is a player that will probably come back to Rangers, I would say, in the future anyway, because I think Scott Arthur was sort of someone that, in his second career, whether he goes down the coaching route or something like that, he's someone we'd always want to keep close to the club, because firstly, he's an outstanding person. I'm sure you have met him when you've had a chance to interview him. Super optimistic, got that lovely bright face and everything about him, super positive. So, Scotty's someone I love working with before. He's been frustrated. He took the frustration out in the right way the other day. Could have scored four. I think if we hadn't won the game, we'd be sitting here saying, oh, that miss from Alfredo first half. Those two big misses from Scotty. So, listen, he's, he's chomping at the bit to go. He knows I trust him. He knows I trust him. And he knows that in, in this building right now, he's super important to me and the rest of the squad. What will happen in the future? Let's see. I think... Just to, just to sort of draw a line under the thing with the contracts is form's going to play a big part. Health and form's going to play a big part in the decisions we make between now and the end of the season and also what we can do in the market and who's available. Money's one thing, players' availability is another and also I want to see what happens when Tom Lawrence and Hadji and Roof are fit. Can they stay consistently fit? What difference does that make to our squad in the attacking positions and the midfield positions? And then I'll see what's out there. I think at the moment, having come into the job, the games are coming thick and fast. The fixture list is quite exciting. But obviously for me, it's also challenging. So let's get through tomorrow and then we can enjoy our turkey and enjoy Christmas Day. So are you that direct with your players that you may say, listen, if you want to be here beyond whenever, you need to show on the pitch? Yeah, if you said to me, would you like a player six years in contract or six months in contract, I prefer the six-month one. They tend not to be injured. They tend to be really focused and they tend to be at the best of their abilities. I've said that to, for young boys coming through in academy to being a first-team assistant to now being a manager. When a player's got something to prove and he's got there, I, I like players in that moment. I think... You know, it's a team game, but certainly you try to fuel the individuals. And a change of manager means that the conversations that maybe were on the table are different now because it's a difference of opinions, a different eyes. It's a new set of staff. It's not just my eyes. And also, we have 50 plus thousand every week that make a judgment as well. And I think they want to see certain things. So I think for me as a, as a manager coming in, I've got to prove my worth. And there's a few, good few players in our squad who've got to do the same. Guys, there's in there. Won't be strengthening the goalkeeper position next month. Um, when the ball goes in the goal, the, everyone looks at the goalkeeper, but for mistaken, Alan McGregor saved this club time and time again. 
made a big save last week against Hibbs that kept the score where we needed it, got us to half time. I thought the second strike from Leighton Clarkson was an excellent goal. The first one, well, he's gone the goalie side, but the goalie's obviously moved and no, no issue with Alan. John McLaughlin at the start of the season did very well, makes a mistake in a high profile game, but I trust him. And Robbie, moving forward, he knows I've got a lot of faith in him. You know, the la in the last month before leaving here, he played away at Alishka and he played at home against Celtic and was excellent in both games. I believe man of the match in, in probably both games. So I think we're in a healthy place, but I do get it when the ball goes in, everyone looks at the goalkeeper. A little bit of both. I want massive competition in the building. We'll get a break after this New Year period where we'll have more training. It'll open out for 10 days or so and I'm, I'm hoping to pitch people against each other. What I've tried to do in quite an unstable time in terms of the back four is try to keep the players that I know in the team quite stable. Um, so I would say in some positions there's been a fair chance to fight for the jersey and others I've just wanted to go with what I know just for the minute, just to get through the fixture list. So, uh, yeah, it's not an area that I'll look to strengthen because I don't feel that we need to right now. Hi, Michael. Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> He's a bit of a hybrid player, Malik. So at Bayern Munich 2, he played sometimes as a striker, sometimes as a number 10. Uh, I've used him more in midfield running on because I think he's an extra attacker that arrives in the box. Late in the game the other day, I had to do something just to completely scramble the game, scramble what Aberdeen were going to try to do. And obviously try to get a response out of my team because for 15, 20 minutes in the second half, I didn't recognise us. I thought... When the goal went in, everyone started forcing it and we had loads of passing errors. So I just decided, right, I'm making four changes. And I thought the boys that came on helped. We played a little bit. We played with four people behind the striker and Scott and Malik were closer together. And I think in the goal, if Malik doesn't decide to, to, to try to outplay and create something, we draw that game. So I'm thankful to him for it. And that's the mentality <laughs> that I want him to have. Same with Ryan Kent. I want them to go where they need to go to get the ball. I want them to have as much touches as possible and have the freedom to, to be the difference maker. I think tactically now, football, um, it sounds really easy, really, when everyone's moving around the tactic board. So what I try to do is have players that can scramble what the other team are doing defensively. And, and Malik and Raza and Scotty with his running can do that. So it's nice to have those options for sure. I didn't enjoy the second half. I never saw it coming. I didn't see us playing in the way that we played in that 20 minutes. So probably had to do some things that, and say some things to people that I didn't want to say. Um, that I had to go somewhere with them that probably I didn't really want to go. So I was, wouldn't say I was angry. I was just disappointed because for 10 or 15 minutes we played how we wanted to play, close together. We passed and run. We caught disruption. And we scored two goals. We started the game like that. We started the game just how we ended it. And we should have been 2 0 up with Alfredo. We created big chances with Scott Arfield. Um, Mallet played a fantastic reverse pass. We should score. There was another one, a volley in the box to keep us saves and parries it. So for me, it was just uh, the shake of the head, really, and the calmness was just why, why are we not playing this way? Um, 
uh, for, for longer periods in the game. But I get it. I've come back into a squad that's not the squad. It's not playing with the same rhythm as the squad that I left. So it's going to take time. And even back then when we were beating teams like Porto, I was always nitpicking when we won the league unbeaten. I remember having like a bear of a sore head for two months because we hadn't won more trophies. So that we're searching for something as a coach and as a team that maybe is not always there. But... I was just a little bit frustrated with the overall performance. Certainly not the mentality of the team to get to keep going. And you could saw you saw in the celebrations the outburst of emotion that they've got at the moment.